part of the, the Spark team, which uh, is going to be presenting today. For those that don't know Spark, Spark stands for Sharing Pedagogy and Refining Knowledge. And it's a collaboration of teachers from schools around Sharjah, uh, Dubai, uh, Ras Al Khaimah and Abu Dhabi. And together, we get together and we, we um, basically share good practice uh, that is occurring in our schools on a daily basis. And we feel that this is important because um, we are the practitioners in, in our profession and therefore we know what is working really well, we know what is having the most impact and we also um, practice it on a daily basis rather than paying uh, an expensive amount for a course which sometimes you get very little from. So we feel that we're going to show you a model today of how collaboration works for teaching and learning. I've got uh, six colleagues from different schools around Sharjah and Dubai and we're going to present for seven minutes on something that we use in the classroom, Okay, something that we feel that works really well and hopefully by the end of this session you'll walk away from this room with some ideas or some sort of knowledge that you could try out yourself uh, maybe in, in tomorrow's classroom. Okay, So I'll go first. Um, Oh yeah, before we start, just to make sure that we are hitting seven minutes, um, when I get to uh, six minutes, 50 seconds of my presentation, you'll hear this sound. Okay, that'll give me a warning sign to finish abruptly and to get off the stage. Okay, so that's, that's the warning sign, don't feel too pressured <laughs> or too nervous. Okay, all right, Eddie, you ready? So, uh, something I've been developing in my classroom is a, a literacy model for my students so that when we come to write uh, they have a structure which they can follow and at the minute this is having a really big impact for my students for writing our exam answers. Um, the model is called IDEAS and the I stands for identify. So the first thing, the first thing that I want my students to do is to identify the key points and they have to write this down on the paper and by identifying the key points um, that gets them into a, like a, a warm-up routine so they know what to write about f as, a, as, a, as a context. Generally for my, for my, ex um, my subjects on PE, so we do GCSE and A-level PE, an identify question is probably worth something around one or two marks and in terms of sort of Bloom's taxonomy, it would be uh, name, list, state, or identify itself. So this would be a low order sort of thinking task, but for my students, it's the introduction for their writing. The second uh, whiteboard, and it just allows them to keep this idea of being detailed, descriptive writing through the use of explanation because sometimes they don't understand what the difference is between the two. So what we try and do is, is make an association. Every time it's, it says explain, you have to describe it and then you link it with the because, therefore, so that this allows. Finally, um, because of the nature of the subject, we have to apply it. Uh, we always use for example. And again, if students don't read the question properly, they sometimes miss the detail and they don't use for example. Okay, so before they even start to write down any, any um, answers, they will write down this model first and they'll tick off every time that they feel that they've wrote something about the model itself. They'll start writing and it sort of calms them down before the big exam. So this is my model, this is ideas. Um, finished? Yep. Two minutes left, so I've, I've finished early for you. Okay, so that's, my, that's one example. Now, a part of the Spark model, I'm going to introduce another colleague up, uh, Rachel Edgar from um, School of Research Science. She's going to give you a, a second idea which Rachel's been working on in her school. Yep. How do I need to? Morning everyone, um, my name's Rachel, Rachel Edgar, I'm Head of Teaching and Learning at the School of Research Science in our Cazays. Uh, and my presentation this morning is about tools for engagement. Um, now engagement in lessons or strategies for engagement, I don't always think get 
necessarily a good press. Sometimes they can, people think that they're a little bit gimmicky. Um, and I would agree um, that fun and enjoyment in lessons are, are byproducts or should be byproducts of learning rather than the end uh, themselves. But I think if you can do things in a fun way, then obviously it's going to be more um, interesting um, for the students. I'm going to share with you a couple of strategies um, this morning. The first one I'm going to share with you um, is thinking skills bingo. Now I picked this strategy up from a Spark event that I hosted um, at the World Trade Center um, a couple of months ago and it is the reason why you've got on your chair, or you should have, um, and let me know if you haven't got one, a little A5 sheet. So can you make sure you've got that and a pen? Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got one? Okay, cool. All filled it out already too. <laughs> the quick learners. Thinking skills bingo um, is, is a game of bingo, but also it is a, about facilitating discussion. It's a diagnostic tool, okay, so you can test um, what students have learned, and also it should help to, to engage and also to encourage students um, to think. Now, I'm a history teacher. I'm not going to give you a, a history unit because you might not all be specialists, okay, and a few puzzled faces. So I've given you a famous person who I hope you know um, a little bit about. And what I'd like you to do, okay, you get the students to either draw a grid or you can give them, give them a grid, save a little bit of time um, as I've done this morning. But I want you now, I'm going to give you one minute to write down nine words that you pretend that I've just taught you, David Beckham, a unit on, okay, and you need to write down nine words that you would associate with David Beckham now, please. If you know him. Now at this point, I'm going to be circulating my classroom to see how my students are thinking. I might prompt a few if they're particularly low ability. <laughs> I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Not entirely sure I've taught him that well. Right, okay, are we ready? Okay, let's have a game then. Right, the, the object of bingo um, is that you, if you get three in a line, then you shout house. Okay? After that, we then play for, for the full house. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. She's got the bingo balls going. First ball out is. Okay, if you've got that he's a footballer, you need to put a cross. Okay. Who got footballer? Yeah. Oh, okay. Very popular choice. Of course, at this point, you can start to, if you were with a class and this was about a unit of work that you've actually done, you can start to now discuss um, this particular key point. A lot of you had him on there, so why do you have him on there? Okay, and why have I picked him out, or perhaps as first? It uh, might be the, then the discussion that you might start to have. Second, has anyone got Manchester United? Good, good, good. Has anybody got two in a row? Oh, somebody's on the verge of a line. Okay. I don't know if the excitement. Posh spy. Okay, his wife. Henry's just looking very excitable at the back. Anyone got a line? Victoria Beckham, yeah. Victoria Beckham, yeah, we'll give you Victoria Beckham. Yeah. Real Madrid. Got Real Madrid. Hey, we've got a line here. Okay, at the front. And if you want to give, oh, we've got a line as well. Three, three lines. Okay, should give you all a prize at this point. Um, and you get the gist. Okay, so we then go on, of course, to do to do the full house. And I think it's really interesting. Um, it's what if nobody gets a full house? So why have I included words that I think are important that my students haven't? Or the students have all put something down that I haven't actually considered. Okay, so that's where you get the thinking, okay, the facilitation uh, behind the discussion. <coughs> oh, so we had England captain. <laughs> Golden Bowls, his wife famously called him. Brooklyn. Okay, so he's got four children, but chosen one of his children. <laughs> LA Galaxy and uh, he's got an OBE uh, from the British Empire. Okay, I got these um, 
as I said, from, from a spark and from a company called Tutor to You, um, who I also did a bit of presenting for um, a couple of months ago. Lots of, lots of different strategies. In fact, Ed will vouch for this because he was there. It was a whole sort of day in which we were talking about things that can engage um, students. And also, a little 10 little quick ways. Um, how much time have I got? Uh, minute and a half. Minute and a half. Okay, I'll just do a couple. Um, 10 quick ways. Okay, to engage students and to make them think. Uh, Post-it note connections. Just give students, again, give them a topic. Give them a David Beckham, okay, a unit you've just studied. Give them 20 post-it notes. They write down as many keywords or phrases or people, um, if it's history, that they can think of. You then pair them up with somebody else. They categorise them, okay. You pair them up again. Okay, and we stick them um, in categories on the wall, on the floor, on the windows, wherever you want in your classroom. Okay, just a little bit of engagement. Um, what else? Du -du -du -du. Google X Labs a good one, a little starter, a little bow work. Um, starter when students first come into your classroom. All ideas are allowed. 50 uses for a sock. Okay, and the students have to come up with 50 uses. 50 uses for a pen lid, 50 uses for an elastic band. Okay, so that's a really good th way to get them thinking just at the very start um, of a lesson. <laughs> Lastly, because I'm going to run out of time, I think, um, if you want that thinking um, skills bingo slide, okay, just uh, contact me at that email address and I'll, there you go, and I'll send it to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Good morning. Uh, my name's Ed Mosley. I work at Sharjah English School with Lee. Uh, I also teach PE and Geography. I do a bit of both. Um, I'm going to present to you today something called Ed Modo. I've just I used, started using it in September, and now I've had a full, more or less, a full year of it. And I just wanted to summarise what Ed Modo is and what I have found have been the biggest impacts in the classroom for me. Okay. So, uh, hands up, anybody heard of Edmodo before? All oh, right, right, preaching to the choir then, okay. You use it at school already? Okay, good, well, maybe I can show you a couple of ways I use it. That maybe, we haven't thought of. So, quickly, little video. Yeah, like Facebook. So what Edmodo is for what you might for those that you might not know, it's it looks a lot like Facebook. So it makes it friendly for our students and appealing for them. Okay? Also makes the teacher look a little bit cooler, right? That we can actually interact with them on a on a format and a playing field that they're familiar with and comfortable working in. Um, but the main things I think it does is keep them organized keep us organised as teachers and lets us keep on top of everything and it, it really expands our classroom to them when they're at home. Uh, how it works is you have a teacher account and you may have multiple accounts for your classes that you teach whereas a student they will then join various subjects and teacher accounts and that way the teacher as a teacher you have complete command over all of your classes and each individual student, and then the student has separate accounts elsewhere. There are lots and lots of benefits for this. You can set tests, you can um, post resources, post videos, 
share, discuss, they can ask you questions at the weekend, whatever. If you're a bit geeky like me and go on Edmodo at the weekend on a Saturday night. Um, but there's a lot, I'm just going to go over a few of them. Um, these are just two quotes from what my students said when I asked them to just write something down what they felt Edmodo was like. These are currently in year nine, so about 13, 14 years old. So Sarah likes it that she can communicate with everyone about homework and assessments. And Ed likes his gadgets, very much into his ICT, really likes the fact that he can just be on his sofa, can go on his iPad with the app and check if there's any homework he's got to do for tomorrow or what's been set that day. Or if he's sick, he can still find out what's going on at school. All right, so uh, just click over to a PowerPoint. Lee, how long have I got left? Three, Three minutes. Well, that's perfect. So the two key things I think the impacts on my classroom has had. Developing collaboration between the students. That is one of the main things. They're now starting to help each other out. Um, today, I'm here, should be teaching, so I've been able to set work for my GCSE class that would have just finished their lesson. Um, so I've been able to communicate this information here, give them resources, and hopefully they'll help each other do this, because the cover teacher doesn't really know much about risk assessment in GCSE PE. So Edmodo has allowed me to make sure a quality cover lesson, hopefully, fingers crossed, has occurred. Um, engagement. I set polls and, and things like that and they vote and, and get involved. So this encourages that community. Right? I, I know how many students are in the class so I know who's not voted. And they're all watching it to see what's voted for. So this was getting them to bring their iPads in. Um, I set questions for definitions, try and trick them, just random things at the weekend. It just helps me. I know two people don't know what longshore drift is in geography. A bit worrying. Um, they, they now got to the point, Samir here, shared his own research. He did extra work when we was doing about coasts and waves, and he shared it for everyone else to see. So that was brilliant. So already, independent research, and he's got somewhere to share that information. Rayhan was off last week in a tennis tournament. He missed his lesson. What did I miss on Thursday? Posted that at the weekend. And before I had a chance to reply, Marios had already told him what he'd done in geography and French. So he, before he's back to school on Sunday, he knows what he needs to do. Akir has been off for a little while in GCSE, asking what he needs to do at home while he's sick. I wouldn't be able to get that to him otherwise. I share a lot of media, so extra things. Watch this video at home, it's only 10 minutes. Bit of YouTube. Even the students then see that, they see that model, and Patrick here in year eight, found a good video from the BP about energy consumption around the world. So he was able to share that. So this collaboration. Uh, I'll just skip on. The next big thing, how long, Lee? A minute, is feedback. This is the most important, my feedback as a teacher. On Enmodo, you su they submit their work online and you can annotate and mark. My marking would never be that good if I just took their book. All right, I had terrible handwriting, I don't really like to write. All right, but it's more informative and it's quality I, can t I always highlight in green what they've done well, so they know the good bits. I suggest improvements at the side. This is really good, but you could have added this in here. They use that feedback to try and improve. And now I encourage them, particularly the older ones, to submit their work early. They've got a week to do it. I give them the feedback and they resubmit improved work. And I'll just give you some evidence of that. Here's Farida asking, can you give me some feedback so I can improve my work? I was a bit shocked when I heard that. Sometimes I make them feel guilty. In a nutshell, too basic, especially for you. Sam's a really good girl. She felt bad about that. She submitted some new work. That was her first submission. Pretty basic, she's an A-level student. And that was the second, two pages, because of the feedback I was able to give her. So, um, that said, Modo, if you want to know more, I'm on Twitter and that's my email address. Good morning, everyone. In previous Spark What Works sessions, Laura and I have presented about a couple of things in the school that, that we think has work, have worked particularly well. Hold it, hold it. Oh, thank you. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that we think it worked particularly well. So we have turned around for this one and asked the students, a range of students, a range of different abilities and so on, to talk a little bit about what has worked particularly well. So the first one which they will talk about is the Big Write, a writing project in year five and six, uh, focusing on um, longer pieces of writing and developing their writing levels. So over to the students with Alia first. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alia Hassan and I'll be talking to you about the Big Write. The Big Write is an approach to varied methods of writing. It is done to test our writing skills which include grammar, vocabulary, spelling, punctuation and also to improve our standard in English. This is done to help us prepare for our SATs. As we have been told that the expected standard for SATs is high. We are given different texts to write such as poems, informal and formal letters, information texts, story writing and newspaper articles. All these helps us in understanding different methods of writing and how to approach them. This not only helps us with our writing but also improves our speaking. It is also important that we use correct punctuation marks and features in the different text forms. The Big Write was introduced to us at the beginning of this academic year. It has helped many students to improve their standards of writing. Those who are unable to express themselves verbally are able to express themselves in their writing. It has given many of us confidence in facing our SATs this year and improving us in our weaker areas. The writing is assessed by our teachers and given a grading with advice on how to improve. This is a very helpful tool for us as it improves our standards of writing so that we can achieve good grades at our exams. Thank you. Our teachers introduce us to the type of writing that will be needed in our big life throughout the week. Every Wednesday we are assigned with the writing task to complete in a limited amount of time, which is 40 minutes. The task is designed to assess us on what we have learned previously during the week, as well as helping us improve. However, the task is always different, which comes in handy as we obtain a lot of information that could help us in our bright future and opens new roads of knowledge. The goals that we accomplish aren't just normal, they're standard. We get a chance to thrill our teachers as they read through our constantly improving work. We are able to share our knowledge and talent with the world. Big Ride is a great opportunity as every individual possesses a chance to prove themselves and achieve pleasant levels, as we all write and express our hidden feelings to the best of our progressing abilities. We are assessed by levels and are given targets to help and encouraging comments that encourage us to complete the road of knowledge. The Big Ride isn't particularly a piece of cake because every Wednesday a rather high attached topic is insinuated into the ears of sophisticated children. Our topics may also be brought up by video, interactive activities, physical movements and public speaking. Fascinating genres such as horror, fantasy, mystery, comedy and much more have been followed up throughout the weeks of this outstanding development which has benefited us in ways that would never be forgotten and cherished in our, in our minds forever. Thus concluding the fact that as children we found this addition to our knowledge as a remarkable change inhabited into us. Honestly, I struggled with developing a new writing style because me myself felt as if I was covered with boredom and ordinary thoughts and that, and that my imagination was becoming dull. But this very situation has brought me to the face the facts that I couldn't change as in my mind I thought that it couldn't get any better than this. As you can see, the tricky bit is what features of the topic you should include. For example, when writing a recount, you need to remember all the key features and, for example, such as writing it in the past tense. As well as editing, clauses, adverbs, adjectives, connectives, punctuation and description are all very important for us to get higher levels. The Big Write provi provides an opportunity for us kids to first get assessed and then improve our writing skills. After the writing process comes the editing process. After we finish writing, we read aloud to a partner and edit to increase higher ability vocab, fix grammatical or punctuational errors, and make sure it makes sense. On top of that, our partner can help us by sharing their thoughts and ideas to help us edit. As you can see, when we edit, our level can increase. Therefore, when we edit, we get much, much more credit. The Big Write improves children's writing abilities as they focus on a specific topic in their writing. It helps them express their emotions. Even though the given task might be challenging, we are always reminded by the discussion that we as a class have learned about this particular topic throughout the week. In the beginning of the year, I got to level 3A, but as time passed, I got much better and gone from a 3A to a 5B. As you can see, the Big Write helped me boost my levels and increased my writing standards. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much to the five of you, that was fantastic.
Um, as I say, this that was all the students' work. There was okay. thanks, though. Uh, there was minimal input from the teachers. It's all based on their experiences and their progression as students uh, over the course of this year. And we re we really feel that the big right has worked for us. Thanks, girls. Okay, the second presentation, which. Laura and I did was about junior apprentice competition. Uh, this was a, as part of the What Worked Entrepreneurship uh, session a month ago. And it's basically a, a business and enterprise competition that is complete, as done by the year sixes in collaboration with the Parent Teacher Association at our school. Um, the students have to think up a game that they then uh, plan, they make the um, they make the stall and so on, and then they sell that game at the PTA Family Fun Day. Um, the PTA then sponsors prizes for the best um, best accountants, the best uh, concept, and so on. So I'm now going to hand over to the students who will talk about their experiences at Junior Apprentice. Thanks. Hello everybody, my name is Rana Shaban. My name is Zinia Jawad. My name is Nadu. And my name is Abdul Tamad. And we're happy to be here and to be joining you and telling you more about our ex extraordinary school events. Today we're going to talk about the Junior Apprentice. The Junior Apprentice is also known as Family Funding. During Term 2 of Year 6, us kids were given the opportunity to experience being businessmen and women for a short period of time, which is only three weeks long. It felt extremely fun, testing and challenging for us. On the first week, us children were divided into 12 groups of 8 to 11 people. In each team, there were accountants, leaders and secretaries. We also had ICT artists who made the PowerPoint about our stalls. Each group had an advertisement crew who helped advertise our game. Last but not least, the speaker of the group uh, persuades other people to play our game on the day of the Family Fun Day. The, speaker were really, the speakers were really important on Family Fun Day. Be but before the Family Fun Day, each group had to make a producer pre presentation, which was judged by the judges. It, the presentation cross-linked in literacy, ICT, and public speaking. Junior Apprentice has taught us many things and has improved our skills. During Junior Apprentice, we realized that it is really hard for us to be businessmen and women. We learned how to handle with money and budgeting, which really helps us in later life to take care of our money and spending it wisely. To sell our games, we had to make advertisements to go around the school so that put our persuasion skills to the test. If any of us became businessmen and women, it would really be important to know persuasion to have and to have people buy our products. Besides all the learning, everyone needed to have good teamwork skills in order for everything to go calmly and not in a chaos. Imagination was also needed to think of different game ideas and ways to make people interested. Everyone in year six enjoyed because it's not every day you get to plan a game for your school's family fun day. It has been a tremendously incredible, astonishing experience for every single one of us. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about a, a tool that I came across probably uh, a few months back and probably started this from September. Uh, it's Google Drive. Um, so I'm going to start off with a little video first that hopefully we'll. Uh, explain a few more things. The screen plan your home computer. The presentation. Sorry. Yeah. That's it. Good. Vacation at work. Those vacation photos and videos on your phone. The trip itinerary on your tablet. Resumes. Recipes. Videos. With Google Drive, you can now access your files from wherever you are. Even the big ones. Whichever program you're using, just drag and drop. And there are all your files ready to be opened by you and shared with anyone you want. Forget files being too big to email. Just share them with Drive and everyone has the same file automatically that they can edit together from anywhere. Now all your stuff, work or play, is in one place. Easy to find and easy to share. Google Drive. Keep everything. Share anything. 
Okay, so having looking at Google Drive and using this in September, this is the benefits I found from uh, from using it. We've got we can create effectively a paperless classroom. We don't need books. We don't need paper. Um, we bring our laptops in, we can bring our phones, you can bring our iPads, and we can complete all work on those devices. Um, the benefit of it is we can create, edit, and share documents, but we can do that in real time as well. So I could be at home working on a document with another member of my staff who's also at home. Or a student could be working on a project with another student, and they could be in completely different rooms, completely different countries, completely different continents. They could work on the document live. It's really simple to use. You can access both online and offline, create these documents, and you get lots of free storage, which is also always a bonus. I'm going to show you some things in which um, how we access it. So Google Drive is an app, okay, you can, it's free, you don't need it to download it, okay, it's built into Google. So if you have a, an internet access, if you have internet access, you, have Google, you can get Google Drive. You can create and use bits of software that are built into your iPad, built into your iPhone, built into your laptop, just like Microsoft Office. So you've got your documents, which is Word, you've got Sheets, which works the same as Excel, slides do exactly what PowerPoint does, and so on and so forth. We can create videos, you can create lots of different things, all built in already to Google. So this is a Word document that's been created by one of my um, pupils in, in my A-level PE class. From that work then, she shares it with me using that top, red, uh, uh, top blue button in the right hand corner there. That document is shared, I can then access that. I can view that document at any time, she can view that document whenever she wants and work on that document. I can read it, I can edit, uh, I can post comments as I have here. The comments appear, the student gets notified and then they can rectify or even ask questions, they can comment on a comment if they don't quite understand what you're looking for, which I found has been really useful. As you can see there's the comment box. What's also I think is really important is it allows me to check their revision history. So every time an edit's been made, I can see that, I can monitor that. So I can see how much work they've been doing over the course of the week or over the course of the project. Um, and I can see their edits and their work is never lost. It always gets constantly updated, automatically saved whenever there's a slight change. So we've got all those changes to hand. This is an example of uh, an Excel document. We use this in the PE department where we've collected everybody's data for their fitness testing scores, but we can work on this at the same time. So I could be in the PE classroom, whereas the other member of staff could be in the PE hall, and we could be inputting this data at the same time. We could have as many people as we want working on this document at the same time. So imagine in a group or in, in a, a class project, um, working on a PowerPoint, working on a Word document, working on a spreadsheet, pupils can work together at the same time. Normally in group work we'll probably get, they'll go away, one person will do all the work and then they'll come back and, and pretend that they all did it together, which never really happens. So you can see two working together. Another great thing about Google Docs is Google Forms. As you can see here, you can create all of these different things within Google Forms. You can create assessments, you can create quizzes, tests. It's great for student feedback, it's great for surveys on pupils, great for surveys with staff, um, monitoring behaviour, recognizing and pra uh, recognition and praise, and what's great about it, which I find, is it's easy to use, you can create little surveys, you can create multiple choice, you can create long-winded questions, long-winded answers is not a problem. What you can also do is you can add videos into that Google's form or picture. So here we could watch a, uh, a video on plate tectonics uh, and then they answer the questions based on that Google form. And that is something that could be created in five minutes and shared straight away to all your students in your class. It could be something that could be shared instantly to all, your, um, all the staff in your school. Okay, so this is great, a great tool I find to be used with staff and with pupils alike as well. And it's, it's made my job a lot easier and I think it's helped the students a lot as well. There's no paper, there's no handing in, there's no lost work. They just do it, they share it, we share it together, we can collaborate, we can edit, we can, you know, we can mark it. And there's lots of little other things that Google offers us to help make this experience easier as well. From that form, all the answers get collated automatically for you. So I haven't done anything here. This was done automatically by Google, okay, by Google Forms. So a questionnaire here sent out to teachers um, and, and, and students alike about a, a coaching course. All that information gets put in there for me. I can then edit that. I can then use that information, create things such as charts instantly, something that Google does for me, and I can get all that feedback from that information. So it's really, really useful 
uh, and something that's easy to use, uh, as I said, and something I think the students like enjoy uh, the students enjoy using as well because of the ease of use, because of the ICT, because they can do that on their phone, on their iPad, on their laptop. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so things you can do in Google Drive, simply if you have a computer or you have internet access, then you can create your Google Drive account. Even when if you don't have internet access after that, you can still create and edit and share these documents. Um, you just need uh, a current existing email, could be Hotmail, could be Gmail, doesn't really matter. You, so, you store your, your files, all your important files, up to 25 gigabyte if you combine it with Gmail, that is. You can create, share, collaborate. You can go paperless in your classroom. And there's lots of other exciting Google apps that you can explore to, to help them develop even better Word documents or, or PowerPoint presentations. Okay, so that's Google Drive. Thanks a lot. Thank you.